everyone, and welcome to Falcon Spotlight, where we get to meet some of the people that make Faribault High School such a special place to be. My name is Sean Peck, and I'm very proud to serve as assistant principal at Faribault High School. And I'm joined today with, uh, by, by Kevin Dunnigan, who is one of our business teachers and DECA advisors and an all-around just excellent teacher. Uh, he's been kind enough to give us a little bit of his time to tell us a little bit about what he does and the impact that he has on our students. So Kevin, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, glad to be here, thank you. Uh, why don't we just start out with you telling us a little bit about your background and uh, how you became a teacher and how you found your way to Faribault High School. Yeah, um, so I actually, when I graduated from school, I went to school to go into business and I actually worked in professional sports for a number of years and I uh, started a small business during that time as well. Um, but after work or in my downtime, I spent a lot of time coaching um, mm -hmm. and really fell in love with working with kids, teaching um, in that environment. And I had a lot of parents telling me, uh, parents of kids that I coached, that I should consider teaching or doing something mm -hmm. um, in that area. So uh, after a while, it, it was the best part of my day. And I, I finally uh, looked into it and went back to school, got my teaching degree, and uh, went down that path. So Yeah. And then did you have other teaching jobs before you came to Faribault? I did, yeah. I worked in Lakeville for a couple of years before I came to Faribault. Okay. And talk a little bit more about your experience with professional sports. That's a very unique experience. What were you doing? Yeah. Um, I started out in marketing and then I actually, uh, when I was in college, I was involved in the operations side of the athletic department a little bit. And a position opened up in operations, so working with the general manager. And they came to me and said, hey, is this something that you'd be interested in doing? And I threw my name in the hat and I ended up kind of switching directions from marketing yeah. and operations, but it was a pretty cool experience um, working, you know, day to day with players uh, and their contracts and salaries and equipment and um, all those different things. Yeah. So it was a pretty um, wide ranging uh, type of position, but it, it was also a pretty cool experience. Yeah, I'll bet. And w one of the things I really admire about you, um, uh, other than your hair, which is a sensitive <laughs> subject, is you provide your students with such just like real world, authentic, and relevant learning opportunities. You know, every time I come into your classroom, you're doing something that that seems to have something to do with their lives, and they can really just sort of grasp onto it. Um, is that a, a result of this real world experience that you had before you came into teaching? And, and talk just a little bit about your approach to that and, and how you come up with these just really cool projects for kids. Yeah, I think part of it is that I, I like to be able to speak to uh, things that I've done in my past or my career, mm -hmm. um, you know, and people that I know and work with or have worked with um, to be able to give kids those experiences to grasp onto. Yeah. It's one thing to um, talk about it and read about it in the textbooks, but when you give them that tangible uh, example. I think yeah. it, it helps them understand a little bit better. Um, so you were doing one, sorry to interrupt, but you know you were learning about production and scale and, and all this stuff and your students had to kind of research the feasibility of a farm to school, you know, locally sourced food food program and they had to kind of apply what they had learned to a real world problem or issue that they're facing every day. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. Yeah, so it was a good experience for the kids. I think Again, th that when they can take what they're doing um, curriculum-wise or what they're talking about in the textbook in class and apply it to something where they can actually get their hands on it and um, chew on it a little bit and, and apply it to their own lives, I think it, it helps them grasp it a little bit more and, and puts it into context. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I try and do as much of that as I can because I think that's you know, I, I, I try and help them understand that we have to go through the lessons. We have to go through that stuff because you need a knowledge base, but um, they usually get more excited with the projects and the stuff and, yeah. and you know, the things we do outside of the classroom yeah. um, normally. And that's a central piece, I think, of the newly created Business Academy, which has been extremely successful just in kind of the early stages of that program. I know you were very instrumental in helping us build that program and now that we're about a year in. Um, what are your takeaways? First of all, what is the Business Academy, if you'd uh, explain to our viewers, and then give us some of the early early results. Yeah, um, so we, we offer a smattering of, of different business courses, but uh, with the Academy model, we're trying to create a sequence where 
the students can start with more introductory or basic level business courses and then build on that as they go through the program. Um, so they start more introductory, get into more intermediate, and then um, their junior, senior year, they can dive deeper into more challenging courses like accounting and um, taking an internship, getting out in the, the um, community with a job experience. So um, the idea is that you know with the academy model, there's that sequence piece so the kids can learn stuff and then build on that um, as they go through the program. Um, business majors, I think, in a lot of high schools ends up being the number one college major that kids choose uh, when, they're, when they're leaving high school. And so I think just helping them understand and uh, we try and offer courses that kids usually struggle with when they get to college, like mm -hmm. accounting and economics are usually uh, weeding out programs or classes at, at the college level so if you take those classes and you're just not really into it then maybe you learned a valuable lesson that maybe this isn't the career path that you should pursue yep yep definitely and when we also tell students too that no matter what career path you choose whether it's medical whether it's um, you know you name it um, you're going to be involved in some kind of business landscape yeah. and I think having that well-rounded understanding so even if you took a couple of our classes and you understand what the marketing department's trying to do or what the accounting department uh, does on a day-to-day -day basis, I think that makes you a more valuable employee no matter what career yeah. path you choose. And I think, you know, when you think about excelling in your career down the future too, you know, you need to have a, a wide-ranging understanding of, of what companies are doing more than just your focus, mm -hmm. so. And we help our students better understand that, I think, um, with our mentorship program. So you mentioned the, the Business Academy has this sort of sequential path that starts with sort of the introductory level. And then I think the culminating activity is a, a partnership that they have with a member of our business community right here in Faribault where they're you know, involved in a relationship where they're learning real world and very relevant skills. Uh, how's that been going? Uh, really well. This, so this is the first year we did the uh, internship class uh, for seniors. So when they finish up going through our business academy, they can go out in the community and get an internship and, and actually uh, apply what we've talked about in the classroom and also get a better understanding of what that environment looks like, what that uh, professional environment looks like. Um, and then the mentorship program is something that we added as a part of our DECA program here. Um, but it also helps us create those relationships for the internships and um, involvement with our programs. Um, but the, the mentorship program was a great success this year. We had uh, 40 different businesses that we worked with that wow. came in and spent a few different nights working with the students, um, helping, them, helping them with their projects, and um, having that's that one-on-one -on -one interaction, so. That's really neat. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, and, and I know a lot of the business <clears throat> people in our community, you know, their ears probably perked up a little bit when they, when they heard you say that our students are learning just on the job skills and, and you mentioned DECA and I know that the, the classroom experience is vital and, and the mentorship program uh, ha, has been very successful but um, extracurriculars are also a really great way to apply some of the things that you're learning and specifically within our DECA program um, it's one of the most successful programs we have in the entire school and I know that you're an advisor of it uh, what is DECA and then uh, what, what are the goals around it and, and uh, talk a little bit too about, maybe it's time to brag a little bit, you know, talk a little bit about the success that that program has really had. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, you know, I attribute a lot of that to uh, uh, Mr. Kegler, our other business teacher who's uh, built that program up over the years and yep. um, I think the standard that he's set for the students that have been a part of DECA over the years has been trying to elevate them and, and give them those opportunities. but. DECA is a way to apply the different business concepts that we talk about. Um, they have uh, different professionals from around the community, Lando Lakes, um, General Mills, different companies that come in and judge the different events. And kids compete from, you name it, there's, there's a whole variety of different things. They can do job interviews, uh, sales demonstrations, they can get more specific into different areas of business that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's it's an awesome way. It's you know it's not really like an athletic competition, mm -hmm. but uh, it is a, a great extracurricular activity. That again, you know we have students who have told us that they're not interested in going into business, but they want to learn how to mm -hmm. speak publicly. They want to yeah. 
get that job interview experience, right. I think, um, and helps them professionally regardless. Yeah, and just like it's it's really neat on Friday night to go watch the football players do their thing, these DECA competitions, they're fun. You see students that are, you know, they're dressed up, they're in their business uh, attire, and they're, they're presenting a business plan to some professional people. Uh, it's extremely impressive what our young people are able to to do, and that's that's a huge testament to you and and the work that you do with them. Um, one of the problems that we do run into from time to time is our registration guide is jam packed with really good stuff. We've got great offerings here for kids to take, and just within the business department, we're talking about a lot of really interesting and innovative programming. One of the problems we do run into is we have a six period day and there's sometimes just are not enough periods in the class day to be able to fit it all in. And so one of the conversations that's emerging around the high school and around the Fairbolt community is around moving from a six to a seven period day. And of course there's pros and cons to, to making that switch, but from your vantage point, what would that do if we did make that switch? What would that do for our students and our school and, and for you just individually? Yeah, I think, um for the business academy model, I think we, we struggle with freshmen and sophomore students that uh, they might take a, an introductory class their freshman year. There's literally no opportunity for them sophomore year to fit something in their schedule just because we're so uh, restricted with the amount of classes that they can but take. The state requires that students take certain yep. classes and that 10th grade year, there's no room for anything yep. else. Yeah. So we, we get some momentum when, they, when they're when freshmen, they get interested, excited about some of this stuff, and then we don't see them for their sophomore year. You have to re-engage with them and try and reconnect with them. Um, and, you know, we, it kind of takes away from that sequence model, mm -hmm. and then what we end up getting is kind of a random selection of students from sophomores, uh, seniors, and, and you're having to reteach certain things in the program. So um, I think it just makes it harder for us to build on the concepts and, and grow that program when uh, the students really only have so much they can do with their schedule. And, and we understand that um, and try and work through that situation. But, um, you know, it would be nice to keep building on those things and, and dive a little bit deeper into yeah. students' interests in their careers and so on. And I know the business community that maybe is watching this right now is I mean, we're in lockstep as far as what our goals are. We want to be able to create graduates that are skilled and equipped to go out and be job ready or college and career ready. And uh, and I, I just really feel like that move from the six to the seven period day would would be a, a huge difference maker as far as our ability to actually pull that off. Um, one cool thing, you know, I have the best job in the world because I, I have a front row seat to all this amazing stuff that's happening. You know, just the other day I was in your classroom watching some presentations. I left this classroom and I go to an orchestra rehearsal and I leave that classroom and I go over and they're doing uh, the amazing race and social studies learning about world cultures and not everybody gets to do that. Um, not everybody outside of our building gets to see even what happens in your classroom. Um, we have many, many community members watching. What do you think, uh, someone who's not with us every day, what do you think they should know about our school and our students and, and just kind of the, the Faribault High School way? I, I think in my couple years here at the school, I've seen a uh, renewed sense of energy in the building. I think uh, one of the things I talked to you about yesterday is I, I think it's just great to hear kids talking about what can be, what yeah. they can do, um, versus what we don't have or what we're not doing. Um, so I think, you know, giving them more opportunities to, to get engaged and um, you'd be amazed with kind of creativity and ideas that these kids have mm -hmm. um, to, to lean on them a little bit and, and take charge of what's going on in the school and this community. Um, so I, I think when you're walking around the halls and you're seeing all these different cool projects and different things going on, it's just, it's great to hear these kids again talking about what can be and um, what can be accomplished and what direction we can go in. I think it's just, it gives everybody a little more energy and uh, positivity in the building. Yeah, for sure. I love that positive sort of approach too. It's awesome. Uh, well, I just want to thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking a little bit. Uh, it certainly has been a pleasure. Um, and thank you for all you do also for our kids and our community. I, I really do feel like our kids, once they get uh, through our doors and across the graduation stage and into our community, they're, 
they're well equipped to do the work they need to done. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. And to everyone watching, uh, thank you so much for joining us. This has been Falcon Spotlight. Until next time, we are Fairball.